Today we're tackling papers and paperwork and believe it or not, this is the one area in my life that I don't have any clutter. Pretty excited. <laughs> this used to be the one area that was the worst and now I've found a system that basically just makes paper take care of itself and I'm going to share that system with you and I am going to try to find a couple of things to purge. As soon as I enter my house, I grab the mail from the mailbox and I put it into the to be paid folder. Listen, I don't sort it. I used to have like to file, to look at, to blah, blah. No, it all goes in the to be paid. And let's be honest, this needs to be go gone through. So I'm gonna do that right now. But I find having one folder for incoming mail, all the paper that I have to look at that's not school related goes right into here. It makes things so much easier one day a week usually on the weekend that's when i go through and i sort everything and i make sure that i'm shredding anything that can be shredded and just going through all the papers as quickly as possible okay so let's talk about my system this is it i know what you guys are thinking that's really not very organized looking, but the truth is I had file folders. I had filing systems. I had filing cabinets that were all divided and subdivided and really complicated, and I wasn't using them. This method really works. What I do is I just grab a basket. Obviously, it's 2017, and inside I literally stack the papers that we have to enter into QuickBooks. Because I work from home, I have to keep all of my household expenses, home expenses, business expenses, and I have to enter it all into QuickBooks and use it during tax time. So honestly, I'm going through all of these things at tax time anyways. So I put them in a basket just like this and I sort them into different piles and different categories in tax time. Now I know you're thinking, what if you need something, Cass? And it's from, you know, last month. Well, here's the thing, when you're stacking like this, it's already in chronological order, you guys. It already is. I mean, you're putting the last month on top and it goes down this way. So it's a really simple, really simple, super basic system. And then once I've entered all these in for taxes, um, then I just store them in my tax folder, which is in my filing cabinet. But the filing cabinet is where all the long-term files go. So contracts, yearly statements, tax things, um, you know, things I have to keep forever would go into there, or at least for seven years. Whereas this is my short-term system. This is where I put papers in the meantime until tax season comes. Some of these might not even have to be used for taxes. And when I go through it during tax time, I can purge it then. So this system, it works for me. It basically eliminates paper clutter. If you're really struggling in paper clutter, I definitely recommend giving this system a try. But remember, if you don't work from home, if you don't have a business where you're writing off your electrical and your gas and you need to keep track of all your expenses, there's no reason to keep all of those monthly statements. You can access them online. You can request that they send you another copy if by some chance you want to go back and look at it again. But it really isn't important to keep them and it certainly isn't important to keep junk mail flyers, news things, all the stuff that comes in our mailbox. I have a shredder right over there. And as soon as I come in the door, any junk mail, anything that really isn't important, I immediately shred. So right beside where we store the backpacks in the mudroom, that's where I have this just magazine rack and it works so great for library books and kids newsletters and you know, the, the fundraisers that they have, pages that need to be signed, all that stuff. This so take just 15 minutes to purge your paper today and a few extra minutes to set up a really simple paper organizing system so you'll never have paper clutter again. Hey guys, so thanks so much for those of you who have stayed to the end. I thought story time today would be about Joe, and I, Joe's my husband. We've been together 12 years. <laughs> no, well I guess we've been married 12 years. It's so long, I can't remember. I think we've been married 12 years, together 16, maybe together 15. I don't really know, it's been a long time. Okay, moving on, how we met. A lot of you guys have asked how we met. We met at this really divey bar. So let me tell you about this bar we met at. I was a waitress there and he was a bartender. He was going through to school, um, university to be an engineer and he was bartending nights and I worked full time at, at the city and I was working there at nights as well. So it, it was like a divey bar, but they had some times where they had bands come in. So it would be really, really packed and everyone's like crammed in like sardines and they're grabbing your butt and you're balancing a tray and there'd be so many people 
people, you're supposed to, like, take a bunch of orders enough to fill a tray and remember who everybody's ghost, right? Like, try to remember their face and their drink and then do math in your head. So this guy orders, like, two shots and a beer and a coolers and a maybe, you know, a, a freaking whiskey sour or some kind of crap. You have to come back with the tray with his order plus other people's orders and then you have to tell him how much he owes you. Two draft beers, a whiskey sours, 475 plus 275 plus. <laughs> and they don't, you can't carry around a calculator and it's very loud and, and, and it's very busy. I'm telling you, waitresses are insane. They're awesome. And, and we're huge tippers because I'm just so in awe that they can do this. I sucked so hard. Here's what I would say. Uh, 20 <laughs> and they'd look at me like okay and then at the end of the night every night I kid you not I owed the bar money I did because I didn't want to overcharge people so I would just like guess how much they owed me because I was so bad at math because everything's a different price it was like 425 225 250 275 and I know it's all like quarters but it's I just it's pressure it's pressure to do math so anyways um even though I was obviously a moron, <laughs> he, he, he still dated me, but it wasn't, it was more like me pursuing him because he paid zero attention to me. I thought he must have a girlfriend or not that I thought I was so high on myself, but I was pretty much like really trying to get his attention and he was not even like looking at me twice. And, and I was like, what's wrong? And, and I probably wouldn't have seeked him out had he not just blatantly ignored me. He didn't talk to me ever. Like all the other staff was really like talking to each other and really nice. And he just was like the person that paid zero attention to me. Pay attention to me. So one time they had a party, like a staff party and everybody went and I was the new girl. So I didn't go to the party. I had to work the bar. He left the party to bring me a piece of cheesecake from the party so I wouldn't be alone at the bar. Can I get a collective? Ah, oh, you know how much I love cheesecake. So then we went on a date and then I guess the rest is history. The thing about our relationship that really works, that didn't work with other people in the past was that I'm like vital. Like I'm like, everything is awesome. And then I'm like, everything sucks. <laughs> and those two things could be one second apart. And, and sometimes I get mad at nothing and I will just, I'll be stressed about something and I'll have to direct it at the nearest person and it's usually Joe or my significant other at the time and I'll start screaming and being crazy and that person's like, what the heck? I didn't do anything. And the more, like the normal person would get angry and scream back like, what are you screaming at me for? I didn't do anything. Where Joe, he's just like, oh, you're being crazy again. And he'll just come and hug me and I'm like, don't hug me. I'm really mad. And he'll pet my head like, all right, crazy, calm down. <laughs> and then and sometimes he's like, look, something shiny. And I'll be like, where? Where's this shiny thing? And then he's like, see, okay, everything's good now. You're not mad. And I'm like, oh, I feel so much better. And that basically sums up our relationship. It really does sum up our relationship, which makes me seem crazy. But I am, I'm crazy. I'm up and down and all over the place. And he's just like, you know, like when people die and their heart monitor's like, ee, that's Joe. Never mad, never really happy, just always even keel.